Throughout our long history, it is craftsmen that have defined the fabric of our lives, from the clothes we wear to the buildings we live and worship in. Down the centuries, their skills have described the detailed story of this land, leaving us with a priceless legacy. And even now, when you look closely, you can see things like the veins in the armor there. These are actually the finest tapestries in the world. There are still guardians of these crafts working today who are dedicated to taking the long tradition of these skills into our modern world. And in this series, amateur enthusiasts, some without any experience at all, are given an intensive education by a master of the craft. I want you to create a fabric which you will actually make into a product. This is what I've been dying to do since we started. But can they master even the basic skills in a short space of time, however intensive the course? I don't think I could feel failure when I've done well, that. And as well as teaching them about the craft, what will they learn about themselves? It's just, it's actually changed my life doing this, and it's not just about learning a new skill anymore. I didn't think it would connect with me, sort of, in my soul as much as it has. There's one element to fabric that makes it different from almost everything else, which is that it's next to us. It's right next to our skins all our lives. And from the day we're born to the day we die, we're in contact with fabric. Weaving is one of the oldest of all crafts, dating back tens of thousands of years. The Romans introduced hand looms to Britain 2,000 years ago. And by the 15th century, British weaving was some of the most accomplished in Europe. There are fewer than 200 people in the UK making a living from hand weaving. And whilst the process might be ancient, many of today's hand-woven fabrics are absolutely contemporary. I'm travelling down to a workshop on a farm in West Sussex, which is where our three trainees will study, under the expert guidance of master weaver Margot Selby. The more I think about it, the more I realise that I know very little about weaving. I love fabrics and sort of assume that I know how they're woven, but actually I don't think I've even seen anybody weave, let alone understood the process. Margot is one of the UK's foremost weavers, and as well as having astonishing skills, she's also built a strong commercial brand, and her busy studio in central London supplies top stores all around the world. But for the next six weeks, she'll be based here in the countryside with her students. Hello. Hello. This is, actually, the truth is, this is quite intimidating for me. But anyway, nice to meet you. I'm nice to meet you. I realise I know practically nothing about weaving. So for me, this is going to be quite a lot to learn and take in. What's the core of it? What excites you about it? You're building a cloth from scratch. You know, you're, you're completely constructing something from cones of yarn through to final cloth. It's not an instant reward that you get when you're weaving. You know, there's a lot of delayed gratification. What's the serious time that you would have to devote to it to become a master weaver? It took me five years before I felt comfortable that I could think of my ideas, have a vision, and then think, oh, I know how I'll do that. Mm. It's more than a hobby. Becoming a weaver is it's a really serious... Commitment. Commitment, that's yeah. a really good word. Yeah. You have to be really dedicated to it. Our three would-be weavers attending the course all profess to have the necessary commitment to master this, the most complicated of all crafts. Holly Berry is a London-based ethical clothes designer. She graduated from art college with a first in fashion and has always been fascinated by weaving. Fabric is a really important part of my life and it's something that is really personal because it's right next to our skin and I think it, it creates that emotional connection with me because of that. I think in fabric, saying that though, I haven't tried weaving before because it's not something you can just sort of get a book and teach yourself how to weave. I mean, I might fall flat on my face and that might be why it's a dying craft because it's so hard, but hopefully I'll be able to do it. Treff Davis now works at an art centre in London after being made redundant from his job as a business analyst for a city firm. The job I used to have did involve a fair amount of sort of being organised, keeping track in my mind of all the different strands of my work that were going on 
And I think for me that's going to be really handy. Treff's ultimate ambition is to go into theatrical costume design. A lot of the stuff I started doing was based around like wanting to use fabric. Wanting to do weaving seems like a really natural progression to that because it's like going back one stage further to want to actually make the material that you're making stuff out of. Mumtaz Begum Hussain is a published craft writer from London. She makes her own clothes and doesn't believe in following the rules. I'm not a perfectionist. So if I'm sewing something, if I'm knitting something and I drop a stitch, I don't go back and pick up the drop stitch, I just make it part of the design. Mumtaz wants to challenge the traditions of the craft and infuse it with her own idiosyncratic style. Nice to meet you. Hello, I'm Monty. I'm Holly. Hi, I'm Montez. Nice to meet you. Treff. Treff. Nice to meet you too. You ready? We're really ready. Sure. <laughs> okay, come with me. I'll take you where you're going to be. Come on in. This is going to be your home for the next six weeks. And this is Morgan. Hello. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the Weave Workshop. These are your looms and you're going to be spending a lot of time on these over the next six weeks. The trainees now have to learn a new and extremely difficult set of skills. Starting with the fiendishly complex process of setting up their looms, they will be taught the fundamentals of weaving before their progress is assessed on a final project. Whichever one of them is reckoned to have produced the most accomplished piece of work will then win full access to a loom in Margot's London studio for six months. And there, he or she will be able to continue their education in the craft. This is the warping shed. And what we're going to do this afternoon is we're going to make a series of three different warps. A warp is the, the yarn which is going to go on the loom. This is a warping frame which hangs on the wall. As I wind the threads around these pegs, the most important thing is that I'm winding across, which is where I go over and under with the threads at both the bottom and the top. And it's this cross which keeps all the threads in order. Then I'm going to take this warp into the studio and onto the loom. Each trainee is given their own warp winder. A single basic fact unites all fabrics. And that is that they're made up of two different types of thread. You've got vertical threads, which is the warp, which are interwoven with horizontal threads that is the weft. And the loom is the means by which these two types of thread are interwoven together so that they hold strong. That sounds straightforward enough, but there's no room for any error. Make one tiny mistake and it always comes back to bite you. Feeling good? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm in great sympathy for you. I have to admit, I'm a little bit lost. I'm good with the, the doing. You know, like the procedure, I think I've got that down. I'm just into the sort of slow act of That's getting it done. But Montaz is already running into problems. I feel like, all right, I just completely forget. And I'm thinking, I want to stand with you. Let's do a few together. So, okay. so where, where does the under ever start? I'm thinking this is going under. Yeah. So then, but. So, keep, so you keep following the rest uh, of the group. Okay. You already, you, you seem to be hitting one of the themes of this, which is repetitive actions, extremely repetitive actions. Yes. Each one of which matters every time. They all have to be exactly right. Right. Holly and Treff seem to get the hang of it quite quickly. Then it's my turn. So if we come up here, we go like that. No. No, we go up over there. I want to go over. No, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We're going to get into a mess. Go there. Yeah, but, so you see the no, two... we are going to get a mess. <laughs> I am going to get in a mess. <laughs> there is something slightly restricting and sticky about this whole process, isn't there? <laughs> I have to say, I feel a bit sort of... Restrained. Tidy. Yeah, I do. I feel like I'm wound round by a yarn, and if only I can just untangle with my fingers. But look how that. beautifully neat and straight these yeah. yarns are, and there's something really wonderful about that. You know, these yarns are in order, and they're going to keep us and our designs and our creativity in order. Now the next thing that the trainees have got to do is take the warp that they're winding and put it onto the loom. 
Now that actually is quite a slow technical process, but this is not all just preparation. Even though it can take days to get right, it's all part of weaving. And that mindset that enjoys and understands and masters every aspect of the process from the very beginning is essential if they're to become competent at weaving. To help us understand the intricate business of setting up a loom, Margot breaks it down into a series of steps. First, the warp is wound onto the loom, using the marker thread on the cross to keep all the threads in order. Then the warp is cut so that it becomes a series of separate threads, which are then passed through a set of heddles. Each heddle is on a different shaft and it's by lifting these shafts in different combinations that I can achieve the different patterns. Finally, every individual thread is pulled through the reed. Now I'm tying it onto the front of the loom. Now all the threads are taut and I've got the backbone of my fabric. If this all seems complicated, that is because it is. It is time-consuming, takes great concentration, and there are no shortcuts. Depending on the yarn, the width of the fabric, and the intricacy of the design, it can take anything from half a day to a week to set up a loom, and that's before you can begin to weave. I feel like I'm in endless fathoms of water above and below me, and if you're not careful, you almost feel panicky about it. And I suspect that for this craft, more than any other I've come across, that what you have to do is just take each process as it comes. It'll be very interesting to see how they cope and whether they succumb to the same sense of panic that I feel. Despite the complexity and skill, even a highly experienced weaver is unlikely to earn more than 28,000 a year from weaving alone. When I very first started weaving, I think for probably five years, I earned less than minimum wage. It's really, really difficult to make a serious living out of weaving. It's not impossible. Um, it takes time, but you can get there in the end. Back in the barn, Momtaz is in a muddle. I don't know what's happened here, but there seem to be a lot of threads which don't have any position. That one doesn't seem to have a home. I hope that it gets quicker with practice, um, but even then, it's, it's quite an enjoyable thing because it's very rhythmic and you kind of get into your own space while you're doing it. It is quite logical and once you sort of get a little bit of it, you've then got 120 more times to practice it. I'm really desperate to get on and get weaving something. I want to hold something in my hands. A professional would take a day to wind the warp and set up the loom for this cloth. It's taken the trainees double that, but now they're all set to do what they came here to do. That's weave. So what I've done is I've woven three samples which I now want you to create on each loom. These samples are all about structure and pattern. We're not looking at colour yet. On this loom, shafts number one and ten do the basic plain weave. So I'm pressing pedal number one, which will lift all of the odd shafts. The shed is the passage that we're going to pass the weft yarn through. Put the yarn across like that, depress it, and then beat it. Operating a hand loom with its various pedals and shuttles requires coordination and total concentration. So far, the most difficult bit has not been to get these two shuttles tangled up with each other. Yeah, I find it quite <laughs> useful to put it on top of the loom while I'm using the other. So, Mumtaz, are you happy with that? Do you want to, to start? I'm not entirely sure. So, when it says pedal two, yes. does that mean I put my foot on pedal two? That's right. Holly, how do you feel about this honeycomb fabric? I'm really nervous. Why are you nervous? Um, because I still haven't figured out how I know which pedals to press in what order. The basic principle of weaving has remained the same for thousands of years, but there are many different kinds of looms. And on these looms, different pedals lift different shafts. 